Now this is redefining wealth. It's not about money, but this is what is possible. Come on. Because I do chase purpose, not money. Come on. I do pursue purpose relentlessly. It's the byproduct, and you need to see an example of someone who lives that way authentically. Mm -hmm. Now, before we hop into today's show, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's jump into the video. Patrice, I, I'm gonna hit it straight forward. <laughs> I met you about five years ago. Yeah. Uh, you were at the time married. I was. Um, and uh, the whole world is gonna know today. You're no longer married. And you're still the wealth lady, but when I look at you, I see peace, I see joy, I see happiness. Y'all see this smile. Get on her smile right now, bro. Get on her smile. Zoom in if you can when you're editing. This, word, this girl is smiling. How are you feeling? You are the wealth lady. We know you as Redefining Wealth. Mm -hmm. How are you? How is your business doing with this huge transition? I'm well. I'm well. Um, it's not to say that I haven't had to grieve okay. anything, but I'm very grateful. Okay. Um, and I believe that's something I learned through this process is that you can hold both at the same time. Wow. You can be grateful for making a decision that you know was the right thing for you mm -hmm. and also grieve the dream that you once had, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I hold space for both, but what I teach at Redefining Wealth is literally what I've used to just take me through this process. I live by the pillars. Do you? Yeah, I live by the pillars. So when I'm not feeling well, I tap into a pillar and go, what do I need to be doing so in this particular pillar? And that's what I focus on. So I try not to dwell on any one thing that, you know that. I never dwelled only on money stuff. Never. Right? Because wealth is so much more than money and material possessions. It's about well-being and happiness. Come on now. And if you say you live by that, mm. then, then why would I not look like I have peace and joy? This is who I am. Yo, you, you just set your pillars for the people who do not know you. Okay, she's talking about pillars help her get mm -hmm. through this. Real quickly, what are your pillars? So the six pillars of wealth are fit. Yep. It's about becoming your best self. The thing I say about fit is you need to be mentally and physically well. Okay. If we say that we have a vision for our lives, it's our duty and responsibility to protect the vessel. It's the only one we're going to get. Okay. And then also remembering you can't pray for things that you're not mentally prepared to receive. Mm. So fit is the first step. Yep. Second is people. Come on now. It's about creating relationships that matter, both personally and professionally. And in that, I just talk about understanding that there's always someone watching you who has the power to bless you, but how are they watching you show up? Who are they watching you be? Okay. And um, if you say you have boundaries, do you enforce them? Mm. That's very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the third pillar is space. Yep. It's about setting up your life to support you. Um, and really just understanding that we say at Redefining Wealth, clutter is the physical manifestation of chaos in your mind. Ooh. So digital clutter, physical clutter, relational clutter, any type of clutter, when you feel stuck in some place in your life, there's probably clutter around you that represents that and you want to clear that. Love it. Um, fourth is faith. Mm. It's about believing in something greater. Now, one thing I always say is I don't care what people say they believe in because I love everybody. But if you say you believe in something, do you make time to practice it? Good. That's good. Period. That's because good. that's what you're going to need in these seasons, yeah. right? Um, fifth is work, living your life's purpose. Um, I truly believe that when you are not working in your purpose day in and day out, it is very hard to set and honor your priorities. Okay. Um, which leads to a lot of fi financial mismanagement. Yep, yep. When people are unfulfilled. They try to use money to yep. buy people or things. Yeah. Doesn't work, just yeah. creates a bigger hole. Mm. And then finally, sixth is money, and it's about attracting the abundance you desire. So I think that a, a big reason that a lot of people could not follow the advice that we've been given right. for all these years yeah. is because they have clutter and chaos going on in all of these other pillars, and it creates a distraction. Mm. So we know the basic money stuff because you and I and so many of our peers have said it in so many different ways, right? Yes. And people go, well, why can't I just budget? Why can't I just do this? Why can't? It's more than likely it's not a budgeting thing. It's a behavior thing. Mm. It's a belief thing. It's a relational thing. Yeah. You know, you got people on your budget that don't belong there, <laughs> right? Like, so... So I operate from the pillars. I set my calendar up by the pillars. I talk from the perspective of pillars. My clients talk to me by pillar. Yeah, yeah. But whenever something is off, I don't try to go beat myself up about that thing. I try to look at the other parts of my life. And it just makes it a more holistic like journey. Man, fit people, space, 
faith, work, money. Mm -hmm. I think in my single season, I think one, the main pillar on your list that I'm really learning to focus on is the space. Really? Mm -hmm. Like creating more space, getting rid of certain things and, and, and distractions and people in my life to create a healthier process for my life, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, um, fit, I got the full gym. I work out every day. I'm trying to be sexy. You know what? This summer, I'm going to be on the beach half butt naked as a Christian man. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to look good. As a matter of fact, can y'all bring me my water? Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Michelle is in the office. Can you bring me my water? I got to get this gallon of water. Alex, so we're we're drinking gallons of water now. Mm -hmm. I got to I got to stay fit. I got to stay fit. You I know feel you. Uh, people, I'm very big on relationships. Yeah, me too. I can tell you are. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because day one, I was like, I like Michelle. I, not Michelle. I'm thinking Michelle for my water. I like Patrice. I, I like First conversation. Patrice. Hands down. Yeah. And it was the best. And and I learned a lot about you in that conversation. If y'all know anything about Patrice, this is why y'all need to rock with Patrice. She doesn't know how to lie. Like, she's just going to tell you what's on her mind. And she was like, bro. And I won't say what you said after that, but she no, said, bro. you can't bro. say it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. <clears throat> see? I see you. You know what I'm saying? Me too. Alex, don't be looking at me like that, bro. <laughs> he like, that's yesterday's part, but it's it all is. good. It is. All right. <laughs> we'll let you be good. Hey, man, listen. I, at least I got all the way here yesterday. Good for you. You know, I mean. You I... needed to write on there, almost keep trying. Dang. You needed to. See what I'm saying? This 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 is what this is what you get from Patrice. That's why she the si big sis. She she the sister. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna ask a hard question. If you can't answer it, then I understand it. Mm -hmm. Being single, I think a lot of people right now are stuck in relationships that they're not happy with. Mm -hmm. They're stuck in relationships that I even believe spiritually God is saying leave, mm -hmm. but they're comfortable where they are. They're comfortable because of the money. They're comfortable because it's just common. It's just familiar to them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe that sometimes those same relationships, right, are hindering them from accomplishing everything God has on the inside of them because they're being focused on that man or that woman. Because there are some men in relationships that know they need to leave that woman. Have you felt since leaving you've been more... I'm gonna say that is. I'm gonna say it like this: Since leaving your relationship, have you made more money? Have you have you accomplished more things? Like, how are you when it comes to the business of life? According to recent stats, only about half of African Americans have some form of estate planning put into place. This includes important documents like your wills, your trust, and your power of attorneys. Additionally, only about 60% of all people have life insurance coverage. But why is it so important for not just black people, but all of us to have these things put into place? You see, life insurance can provide financial protection for your loved ones in the event of your unexpected death. It can help cover funeral and burial expenses, uh, pay off debts, and even your mortgages. But here's what I really want you to consider. It can provide income for your loved ones to build wealth with. You see, estate planning, on the other hand, can help ensure that your assets are distributed according to your wishes after your death and that your loved ones are taken care of. If you truly love, and I mean this, if you truly, truly love your loved ones, don't leave their financial security at chance. I want you to get life insurance today. You can get a free quote with my friends over at Ethos by visiting anthonyoneal.com forward slash life insurance or by clicking the link in today's show notes. Protect your family's future and give yourself peace of mind. Don't be in heaven and you're full of joy and your family is here on earth struggling and stressed. Get life insurance today with my friends over at Ethos. Hey, now let's get back to today's show. I know it's a good one. Okay, I'm going to answer that, but let me go back. Okay. I don't think that most people are comfortable. Oh. I think that they have learned to intellectualize what they're actually feeling. Okay. And I think that many of us have been so focused on self-awareness, mm -hmm. which is all the stuff up here, yeah. that we have completely abandoned soul awareness, Ooh. which is spirit and all this. And our souls are exhausted from us lying to ourselves. Ooh. Right. That's so, good. so well, it's not that you're comfortable because there's definitely something yeah. that nags at you a little bit. And there's something where in your spirit, you know, it's not right. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but we like to romanticize reality. Mm -hmm. So what we do is try to justify okay. and rationalize, ration out lies, yeah. right? And we try to make excuses for and dismiss and diminish because many of us have been taught that that's what you should do. Facts. Facts. Many of us have been taught that you stuff down the emotion and that, you know, um, your feelings are not necessarily valid. Yeah. And so we're taught to try to romanticize the pieces that we like and make that everything mm. while completely ignoring and dismissing mm. the list of things that just don't work for us or serve us. Yeah. And so for anyone who's in that place, I just want to put words to it. I understand that you're probably not comfortable, but it makes... It looks good. Yeah. I'm in a season in my life where I've decided that I will prioritize peace and purpose over appearances. Come, whoa, 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 say that again. Peace and purpose over appearance. Over appearances. I don't care how good it looks. I don't care how beautiful our Christmas time family pajama photo looks. Ooh. I don't care, you know, that you, I don't care about any of that. None of that. If I don't have peace in my soul, it's a no. You are talking right now. Because people are watching you saying, ugh, they felt that. Mm -hmm. Because people, they care about the appearance. Yeah. I actually dated one chick. And she was all about the appearance of us dating. And she was willing to go through hell, mm -hmm. spend money that she didn't have, would ask me to spend money that I know I shouldn't be spending just so we can have the appearance of happiness. Mm. And I... Can I be real? Yeah. This is my show. It's real talk. It's, it's Patrice. A part of me almost did it, Patrice. Yeah. Because she had the booty. <laughs> you know what and I'm I saying? know that's one of your things. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? She she had, I thought she had the brains. Mm. And I questioned if she had the Bible. But because she had the booty and the body, I said, well, mm, well maybe. You tried to romanticize. I did. Yeah. Because, you know, as a single man, I'm like, dang, I'm tired of being single. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be 40 here soon. And I'm like, what in the world? But then without knowing what I did, I did your route. I said, nah, that's not that's not even worth it because that's going to bring me hell. That's going to bring me, bring me drama. I'm not going to be practicing what I'm preaching to my people. Yes. So I said, nah, man, I'm not even going to do that. And to this day, she won't talk to me. Mm -hmm. What got you there? It's where? Which part? To, 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 to <laughs> desiring the peace and purpose. Because you didn't really have nothing about money in there. Mm -hmm. But if you focus on your purpose, that produces income. Yes. But what got you focusing on the peace and the purpose solely, though? My soul being exhausted. <sighs> My soul was exhausted. And, and something that you said, you know, I've said for many years, I don't desire to be a public success and a private failure. Mm. And I realized that. I was living by the pillars mm -hmm. and I was teaching and I believe in them wholeheartedly. Like mm -hmm. this ain't a podcast thing for me, yeah, right? It's yeah. like, this is how I live my life. But my former husband and I would be in conflict, not because he debated whether those things were true, but because I didn't always see them in him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after a while, it becomes intolerable. Mm. It becomes intolerable. And this is not to make him wrong. Right. And I'm not wrong, but it became very apparent we were not a right fit for each other. Mm. We met at 20. Wow. We were best friends wow. for like a year or so before we even started dating. We were dating by about 22. I just turned 42. So you're talking about yeah. not who I was yeah. at 22 years old. And I've gone through a lot of personal development, a lot of therapy. I, I invest yeah. in Patrice getting to know Patrice yeah. in and out very authentically. Yeah. And the more that I did that and you could see that the differences became glaring at some point. And you, you made a point too, like earlier, I believe that life is always speaking to us. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So for years, life was speaking to me, whether it was through dreams, it was through visions. I don't know about you, but God has a way of getting to me. Mm -hmm. I have, I would have, I would have a, Random person in Subway prophesied to me. I would have a person in Uber, like, say, I don't know why I feel like telling you this, but there were a series of things that would happen, mm. and I would try to dismiss them away. Mm. But life was speaking. Many of us don't want to hear what life has to say. Mm -hmm. So we, it doesn't fit the picture. And I think the big thing for anyone who's in a season of transition is to understand you can dream a new dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some dreams, right, serve you for a season, 
But when we stay in situations, and it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. This is jobs. This is a city or something. When you stay beyond the expiration date, yeah. you prolong your own suffering, yeah. first of all. Um, and second of all, it's like you don't believe that God could do a new thing. Stay right down. Let's go deeper. Uh-oh. Do you think, how do you feel right now? You was married for 20-something years? I was married for 15 years. 15 together years, together with 19. a guy yeah. Yeah, for, for 19 years, one guy. Now you're single. <laughs> I just have to laugh. Because <laughs> it is different. Hey, I'm serious. It's yeah. like 19 years ago in the dating f- is different from today. Very. You know what I'm saying? 19 years ago, you... you we didn't know Patrice Washington today. Mm-mm. 19 years ago, Patrice Washington didn't have a seven plus figure business. 19 years ago, Patrice Washington wasn't on national TV. 19 years ago, Patrice Washington didn't sell books. 19 years ago, Patrice Washington wasn't as fit and as beautiful and as tall. She only date a taller man. We about to get I was there, as y'all. tall. You were as tall? I've been this high since I was 15. Oh, Lord <laughs> Jesus. All right, all right, all right, all right. So it's like you go through this divorce. Mm-hmm. I've met ladies who have been through some breakups and some divorce, and they cannot stand men. They're just like, oh, all men are this, and all men are that. And I'll just be like, wait, mm. what? How do you feel now being single back in the dating game, successful, making money? Like, is one, and if it's too much, you can say it's too much. But are you interested in dating and eventually getting back to marriage? Because I'm going to say this before, before you say it. I see you as a wife because I've watched you over the years and how you covered your last husband and how you're just a great big sister to me. I'm like, you are a relationship person. I am. So I'm like, I want to know, one, are you, do you desire marriage again? One. And then two, how is the dating field for a successful woman? <laughs> Okay, first of all, yes, I am wife material. Absolutely. Yeah, no, like, no. definitely. Okay. Um, and I am very relationship-oriented. I mean, I was with one person pretty much my entire adult life. Yeah, yeah. So my previous dating experiences, you're talking about beginning of college? <laughs> I was a child, you know? Um, so, yes, I'm interested in lifetime partnership, possibly okay. marriage. I'm not turned off to the idea of marriage, but I'm also okay with like, hey, you do your thing, I do my thing, and we have an understanding. Is that like an Oprah and uh, what's his name? Absolutely. What's, Steph? Yeah. So they don't agree in, but they live together, we not married, but we doing life together. Yeah, and I'm I'm like okay with that to an extent because I know at this point, we're both coming into something with money and assets and mm-hmm. all of this stuff. And let me tell you, untangling mm-hmm. is not for the faint of heart. Did y'all have to untangle in your past situation? We still untangling. Oh. Yeah. So even though the divorce is final, there's still work to be done. Okay. And that's not necessarily a part of life that I look forward to doing again, I especially because I know that now that I'm freer to be my full self, what I've done pales in comparison to what God is going to do. Mm. Eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. I'm mm. very clear mm. that I was living a fraction of who Patrice Washington really is. And I know people think, oh, you're so outspoken and you're this and you're that and all of that stuff. But there was still always a part of me that will only go so far yeah. because it was ingrained in me that you have to, like, your husband has to be here. Right. And you were, like, the support. Right. So as my career kept growing, I do recognize that there were points where I would only let it go so far. Okay. Not that I was sabotaging, but I know that there were things that I didn't go for because mm. I felt like it'll be too much. Mm. That'll be too much of a strain on my marriage or my or my family. And I said no to a lot of things. And I don't regret saying no. But in this season, when I'm free, there's no rescheduling joy. I'm doing everything that scales joy in my life. Wow. And I'm going to go after the opportunities that feel right for me and what's next for me, right? Mm-hmm. So with that being said, mm. you know, I expect by the time, you know, I meet this ideal partner, <laughs> I expect by We're that talk time, about this ideal partner. Um, you know, that we might both have so much, it would be understandable if it's like, you know what, mm. at least initially, don't rush to propose to me. Gotcha. Okay. I'm okay with that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. But has it been, has it been difficult? 
it's been interesting. <laughs> so that, that's your way of saying yes. It's been interesting, you know, so my mindset is not what you described. Okay. I do not think that all men are dogs. I don't think that all men are bad. I don't think that all men are anything mm -hmm. because I see people for who they are. What you show me mm -hmm. and what I see when we're interacting is what I go off of. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going like all men this and all men that. That's just not my energy. Every time I've had a dating experience or met someone, it has made me more aware of what works for me and what doesn't. And I just take that lesson. That's so good. And I take it into the next situation. So, you know, I had this idea, right, this list. And so as I meet people and I get to interact with them and observe, yeah, yeah. which really that's all we're doing in the beginning, you're observing. Right. So as I meet them and observe, I get to say, how does this feel for Patrice? Because I'm not in a season of dismissing my feelings anymore. We're not doing that. So I get to say, how does this feel? If something doesn't feel good, I'm very communicative and I know how to say it with grace, but I can share like, hey, you know, I noticed this or, it's, you know, it seems like yeah, yeah. just maybe I'm looking at this incorrectly. I'm able to do that, right? Okay. Once we've acknowledged that there is something that doesn't work for me and you continue down this path, right. to me, that's just my permission slip to move on with my life. Like, mm -hmm. because... I'm clear that this doesn't work for me. Yeah. And you're clear you're not changing. Cool. Then we don't have to waste each other's time. Is but that I quickly, that. though? Like, are, are you saying, like, all right, within, if I say it and if you don't do it within one day, you're done? No, 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 no. Okay. Um, the things that I'm referring to are things that are just fundamentally not going to work for me. Mm. Studies are showing nearly right now, currently in the year 2023, that nearly 70% of people live in paycheck to paycheck. When you dive deeper into this study, study reveals that out of that 70%, a large portion of those are people who make over six figures. These are people who are living paycheck to paycheck because of inflation, because of job loss. But a lot of people say, man, we have an income problem. And here's, here's the truth. We don't really have an income problem. We have a lack of utilizing our gifts and skills problem. You have the skills, you have the talents that God put on inside of you. And I want to ask you this question. I want to be very honest. Are you utilizing them correctly? Or are you just going to work, getting that check, coming home, and not really utilizing your gifts and skills to build wealth to pay off debt? Well, listen, I am hosting a free, a 100% free masterclass here with the next few days. And I'm teaching people how to build a personal brand, how to use the gifts and the skills that God put on the inside of you and turn that into an extra thousand to $5,000 a month to go towards paying off debt, to go towards, you know, building an emergency fund, to go towards building your dream home. But I'm going to go even a step further. What if you can use the same principles? I'm going to be teaching for free. You make an extra 1000 to 5000 but what happens if you could turn it into a six figure income or maybe a seven figure income within the next couple of years. Well, if you are ready to take control of your money, if you're ready, ready to utilize the gifts and the skills God has given you to build a legacy, to build wealth for yourself, can you meet me? I want you to go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash save my seat. Again, that is anthonyoneal.com forward slash save my seat. Or you can click the link in today's show notes. It's 100% free. Come join me. Let me show you. Let me show you how we, my team and I, built a seven-figure brand and how we can put $1,000 in your pocket within the next 30 to 60 days. I'll see you soon. And you're not wrong. Mm -hmm. You're not bad. If mm -hmm. you've been rocking like that for 40 years and everyone else you've been with has told you that was okay and you're not interested yeah, yeah. in a different perspective, I respect that. I respect you enough to release you. Mm -hmm. And myself. Because liberation is not one-sided. That sounds harsh. No, it's not. <laughs> you know what? A guy that I dated told me that I was very, I was harsh, right? And I said, I don't think I'm harsh. I'm clear. I'm just, I'm just really clear. It's not that you need to change in a day. No. Sis, no, you said, I'm just going to release you. I said, that sounds harsh. Oh, it's the not, release. yeah, the release. Oh, not I your, don't say it to someone. Oh, I was about to say, no, 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 I'm no. just going to release you. Now, no. that sounds harsh. No, in my head, I'm like, <laughs> this joker released after this thing right here. No. <laughs> I'm not saying that I say I will release you. Oh, I was but about that's, to say. That's my that energy is, is I respect okay. Okay. who you are yeah, yeah. and that you have your own thoughts around your ideal partner. You came into this with thoughts as well. Yeah. And so you may feel like, well, a woman needs to do this and this and this and this. And that's fine. There's mm -hmm. some of those things that I'm willing to bend to and I'm willing to like figure out if the person is yeah. worth all that, right? And then there's some things that just 
fundamentally don't work for me. So mm -hmm. why do we have to act like I'm like every dating situation to me is not like I'm looking for my life partner or husband. OK. OK. So because of that, like it's OK to me to just observe and be like, well, that was fun. So you're going in. You look at dating now this season of your life intentional, but it's not intentional for marriage. It's let me just learn and see if there is something there. And if it's not cool, great. If it is. All right, let's proceed forward. Yeah, because I didn't get the phase that a lot of my girlfriends got. Got you. So a lot of women who get married later, they went through all of these different scenarios mm -hmm. and circumstances, mm -hmm. and they saw a lot. I was with the same person since I was 21, 22 years old. So I didn't get the chance to, like, Enjoy and learn. It, like, talk to different people, learn, mm. understand men in a different way. I understood one man okay. for 19 years. Okay, okay. I didn't understand, you know, I don't I don't have enough experience to be like all men. And that might be why. I don't have enough experience to be like all men do this and all men do that. I wasn't raised in a home with my father. Wow. And I didn't have men in the household. I had my mom, my grandmother, my aunts, my first cousins who were all girls. So there are a lot of things that I didn't learn, mm -hmm. cues about men and different things that I feel like this is my season where mm -hmm. I'm getting to like learn men, but also learn myself in relationship to men. Wow. And then also get to go, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> and I'm okay with it. I'm not mad at that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not mad at that at all. I mess with you all the time. Uh, but, you, you know, you do mess with me all the time. Can you tell them what you told me on my show? What I tell you? I said a lot on your show. What you you said way too. First of all, <laughs> it needs to be redefining wealth with A.O. Hey, listen, we had a blast on your show. <laughs> listen, is it will it be out? Is it out? It's, it's going it to come is, out around the same it. time. Okay, cool, great. We're going to link that show. Yeah. We're going to link that in today's show description. That was one of my favorite shows. Like, we had a good time. I promise you I thought I was on my show. <laughs> You acted like I it. so I was <laughs> listen, y'all. I was on Patrice's show asking her questions. Like she had a whole bunch of questions for me. I was like, nah, sis. Uh, mm -mm. No. You were nah. asking me about um my list. Yeah. Your list, I think, sis. <laughs> I mean, because my guys was just getting on me yesterday saying, what y'all say? I'm, I'm looking for, who, what, who am I? Oh, he's, he's Eddie Murphy and Boomerang. Boomerang Eddie Murphy. They're saying I'm Eddie Murphy and Boomerang. Like, I'm looking for this perfect woman. No. And I'm not looking for no perfect woman because I said I want her to have the brains, the Bible, and the booty. That, what, that, ain't, that ain't perfect. That's just my desires. Yeah. But your desires. Yeah, are clear. What's your list? You got like, what? 20-something. 20 20-something, 20 but you only gave me like seven. Yeah, because there. So this is the thing. <laughs> now, give, give me your top five. What, like, what are the top five things? No way. I'm, I didn't ask you this question. Did you? Do you have to have all twenty of those no, things? No, that's what I was about to say. Okay, cool. If I cool. have the desire to dream a new dream, right, and think about what I want in an ideal partner, yeah, why do I have to limit myself to two or three things? I'm not saying limit at all because no, they're but, limited. But I've had they're upset people, with me with my three. No, but I've had people tell me. You really just need to like do two or three things and let God fill in the rest. Okay, well, here's the deal. When I was on a plane mm -hmm. from, I was doing a gig in New York, flying to San Antonio. Okay. Literally, I heard the Holy Spirit say, you don't even know what you really want. Mm. You don't You don't really know what you want. Mm. And I was like, yes, I do. And then, you know, the next one was like, even. list it. So I started listing. I got to four or five and I remembered. I was like, oh, people always say, you know, you don't want to have too many things. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit said, what does that have to do with you? And I said, heard. And by the time I got to San Antonio, I had this list. Now, there are things on the list that are desires. Okay. They are not deal breakers. Okay, so wait, give me five things. If he doesn't have one of these five, I don't want him. If he's not a good financial steward, I don't want him. Makes sense. Redefining wealth. Got you. Yeah. So and, that, and I don't care how much money you have. If you can't manage it. Absolutely. Managing your money is more important than the income you actually have. Now, I also had to add a caveat oh, <laughs> to that. Lord, Jesus. A good financial steward and generous because some people manage money well, but they're stingy. They won't give to charity. They won't tip. And they're they not going to give me anything. I, Patrice. You got to be generous. Patrice, this sounds like cap right here. What, what, what you I, mean? What I hear you saying is he got to be a good financial steward. And generous. No, no, no. And your generous is, is, here's what I hear you saying, and buy me some things. 
No, I'm not even hard on that. <laughs> no, truly, truly. I'm probably, unfortunately, and, and my girlfriends will be upset with me for saying this, I'm probably easy to date because I'm not looking for a lot of gifts. I like experiences, though. Ah. I like experiences. Now we talk. It's not that I need expensive I gifts. I like. Because, okay. I mean, honestly, if I want something, I can go get it myself. Facts, you can. That's facts, right? Mm -hmm. So, but even for myself, I'm not even the one caught up in all the stuff. Like, I'm just not. Okay. So we, he got to be a good financial steward. Mm -hmm. He needs to be generous. And that, generous those go mean, together. Those so go to, I want I need those to be one. All right. Okay. So it's almost like it's almost like if y'all out at a nice restaurant mm -hmm. and the ticket is one hundred, mm -hmm. and he give the the waitress two dollars. Uh, sir, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? No, I'm with you. I'm big on that. I grew up in hospitality, uh, so I'm very big. Like, you know, I was leaving. I was <laughs> telling all my business. Okay, so I was at a hotel one time with okay. this guy, right, yeah, yeah. that I was dating for months. Yeah, yeah. And so we were leaving, and he didn't tip, like, the, he didn't tip at all, tip the, at all? the housekeeper, right? So I went back and put, mm -hmm. and we had a nice suite. I went back, mm -hmm. and I put tip money. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, tipping the, house the housekeeper. Yeah. He's like, they already get paid. Now, here's why this is big for me. My okay. mom was director of housekeeping for Marriott for years. I grew up in hospitality. I understand how all of that works. Yeah, yeah. And I always think about my family. I'm first generation American. A lot of the, the women who are yeah. raising families. Yeah. And they are depending on these tips much more so than they are the hourly. Absolutely. Right, right. So I'm very conscious of that. And yeah. it's a sensitive thing for me. Yeah. Because I was the kid benefiting from the tips at one point. You know what I mean? I didn't know that bartenders rely on tips. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that their their pay is not mm -hmm. a lot at all. At all. Like if they were to live off of what the the restaurant gives them, they Impossible. could not survive. Impossible. It's tips. So I'm very, like, aware mm. of that. So for a man who will spend $700 uh, on, on, a, on a suite and for the night, nothing. and then you don't want to give $20 or $30 to the housekeeper, to me, that's incongruent. Like, it just, you're, you're not generous. Did you tell him? Did you yes. tell him, like, hey, like, yes. we need to do this. If we're going to do this again, this is what I expect. This is what I need. Yes. Okay. Because I don't open think... to it. I mean, he I think there are some men who don't know that. Yeah, he I think understood. not just some men. I think a lot of people just don't know that. Yeah. Right? So that's good. That's good. All right. So he got to be generous. He got to make some money. And on your list, this is this is where me and Patrice fall out at. <laughs> I'm not even... I have so many things on the list, and you really just want to get to this. <laughs> this is where me and Patrice fall out at. I said... Okay. I said my desire. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, no. This is this is my desire. No, 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 no Patrice, My that's desire. Not, that's not your desire. Is that Patrice. you be still two to three inches taller than me when that's I have. That's not a desire. Taller. That's a desire. That's not. A, that's a mandatory request from you. No, because you could be even an inch taller and I would accept it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel. I feel so, like that was so very flexible. So the key flexible. thing is he has to be taller. Listen, we go we go through this all the time, y'all. So listen, listen. Let me. We go through this all, all the, the time. time. And Listen. this is my sister. And I'm like, yo, you could be dating a Kevin Hart right now. No, I couldn't. You could. <laughs> no, I couldn't. He could be a, I'm talking about making a hundred million dollars. And, and, we and would you would pass friends. up on him. I would. I would. I got it. In the YouTube channel. I'm not bending over another 20 years. I'm not leaning to the side. Oh, no. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm turning around. I'm looking this way. I'm not going to do it. She said, I am not bending over another this 20 years. This next half of my life, I get to stand tall. I'm, I never met, you, I never met your husband in person. Was he taller or shorter? <laughs> I get to stand tall and be in my full glory of all that God made me to be. I am 5'10". <laughs> For the viewing audience, I am 5'10". And then what, 6'1"? And with one, heels six, on, two? I'm about 6'1". So 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", is ideal. But let me tell you this. When I stopped saying that there were no tall men, because that was a story I had going on, yeah. when I stopped saying that, do you know that I attracted 6'9", 6'3", most recently 6'6". Six, six. They're out there. Why? Why should I? I know about your most recent one. I was hoping that was the one. Hmm. I'm sure we both were too. Yeah, I was yeah. hoping that was one. I even texted you about it. I was like, I was praying for you. You, praying you did. For you. I was like, man, I'm really praying for this situation yeah. and y'all. 
I just think y'all two just look amazing. I just like man. But that goes back to appearances uh, versus peace. Peace. Yeah, I got you. And that's why, literally, when you said that at the beginning of the show, I was like, it clicked. I was like, okay, wait a minute. Yeah. I got it. There was a lack of peace in that. I got you. Yeah. Um, What about money? I asked this to all of my successful ladies, and they get upset when I say, can you date a school teacher? So I'm going to leave a school teacher alone because some ladies say, well, that's just disrespecting a school teacher. So I'm going to pull over here. Can you date a guy in the season of where you are now? Mm -hmm. Trying to think. Because no matter what I say, any woman is going to have something to say about that that profession. But I'm okay. Can you date a blue collar worker that makes about fifty thousand dollars a year? Good man. He has mm-hmm. fifty thousand dollars in his salary, but he's been saving and investing properly. He got about like you know close to a million dollars in his net worth with investments and stuff Good for like him. that. <laughs> I'm not saying, no, I think that's awesome. God, you know, God. Well, the financial God, is like, good for him. He may watch. Yo, your face is like, good for him. No, good for him. No, I think that's but great. He come up to you, and let's say he's 6'5". Six, 6'5". Five. Six, five. So I'm going to give you your height. 6'5". Yeah. Five. He's generous. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he only made $50,000 a year. Mm-hmm. Could you date him? I could date him. Could he date me? Why do all y'all say that? I could date him. So this is the thing. Again, I'm not dating in this season of my life with the immediate intention of getting married. Okay. Okay. So could I date him and could we have a great time? And like, yeah, absolutely. Could he necessarily become my life partner? I don't know because I don't know if he would be able to handle me. What's, what's the handle Patrice now? I think so much. I think it's more about, be okay with what comes with a woman who is financially successful, financially successful, and but just, also has her own yeah. like platform and yes. her own. Cause one of the challenges that I've challenges I've already seen is that if we're out, especially if we're in a space mm-hmm. where I'm more well known, mm-hmm. I have seen men kind of shrink. What? Are yeah. Serious? Yeah. And it's typically the ones that don't have their own, thing like their own so one of my things is that he has to be clear on his purpose and calling okay right That's because i'm clear on mine okay yeah and so i feel like if you're clear on yours your identity is probably much more solid and rooted mm-hmm. than if you're in a you're in a job but that's not what you really want to do mm. and you're unfulfilled mm. and you feel some kind of way about it and then here i am I'm all purpose and rainbows and I get to go do everything that I want to do and I could get up and go and you could be like, sis, come do this interview. And I'm like, bet, book a ticket, go. Like, yeah. I have a lifestyle that affords me a lot of freedom and typically someone in that position, they waiting on vacation time. We don't live the same. <sighs> and that's not to shade them. It's different. <sighs> You're not wrong. I'm not wrong. But it may not be a right fit because... Look at our calendars. You were on your publicist, mm-hmm. on the phone with your publicist mm-hmm. before this began. Mm-hmm. That's how I sound. I can't do the 26th, but I could get there the 27th. Well, if I fly from here and then go there and someone that doesn't understand that lifestyle right. and doesn't have the freedom and flexibility to meet up with me in a city or to come, come to with stuff, you. to come with me to stuff, they start mm-hmm. to feel a bit insecure, even if they were I'm a secure man until your woman out and about. But the question is, you're saying, can he date you? But can you even date that man who cannot do that? That's the real question there. Well, I Because I think on. there's a lot of men who actually be like, all right, cool. I ain't got to be up beneath you all the time. Cool, great. I think they say that until it happens. I think they say that until it happens. So Maybe, with maybe because I'm in that. No, yeah. don't go there. Oh, no, yes. No, oh, y'all we gonna love. We're going to end this show right here. <laughs> No, no. Even with successful men, this is what I found. No, no, no. And the one that you know, the one that you know. No. Let me tell you what would happen. Oh, my God. If I was out speaking, when I'm speaking, A.O., 
I'm very present to what I came there to do. Absolutely. I got paid to come there and do that. And you're going to do your job. And right. I'm going to do my job. Mm -hmm. I am going to fully engage with the audience. When people book me to speak, they usually can't believe I'm the person who will stand there and talk to every single person. Mm. I will wait until the line is down. I'm going to sign books. I'm going to do everything and be present, right? Mm -hmm. That means I'm not just getting paid to speak for those 45 minutes. You're getting paid to be there. I'm getting paid to be there yeah. and I'm there. Yeah. So I'm the person that will be fully present for four or five Five hours I'm not thinking about texting you so when I do look at my phone what I don't need is oh so you still uh so you gonna say you was just the whole <laughs> excuse but that, you is that all the men you've dated that I know of have some level of success are you saying all of them have been that no way? no okay, not you. at all so let's not talk about you know just the small it, it, it happens though <laughs> I, we just need to acknowledge that it happens. And I'm the type of person, when you say that you are working and you're doing your thing, I may text you just like a, hey, miss you or whatever, whatever. Yeah. But other than that, I let you live, breathe, flow in your purpose. Like, because I know how that fills us up and that gives us such joy. I'm not going to be texting you and calling you. And I think, too, a part of that comes from, which I don't see that with you, because all I know is the nourishing, loving, supportive, feminine, feminine woman. I think some of that stuff comes from those, from some ladies, because ladies gonna be like, wait, watch yourself, Ayo. Comes from some ladies who are not feminine, really. They bring that masculine energy all the time. Mm. Now, you are very straightforward, but you're very soft with your straightforward. And so I, I wonder, though, like, did, do you ever make a man feel like he's not valuable when mm -hmm. he's with you? Because mm -mm. that is where some men will have a problem. If he and not need it. Like, I don't need a woman to make me feel like I, I need her to make me feel like a man. No, but I do want my woman to make me feel like I am valuable in this mm -hmm. relationship. You know what? I think I do it too much. Do I think that's you? a part. I think that's been a part of my challenge in this like initial dating phase is because I'm relationship oriented. You are. So I be shutting everything down. Like if I feel like you it and you I'm really into it. you, yeah. I'm not, I don't rotational date or yeah. Olympic dating or all these different terms that they have now that I'm learning about. I really don't do it, but I see why you should. Mm, I see why you, you should. Because you're emotionally giving everything to one man to eventually it drops and then now you got to start it all the way back over. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I love relationship. I love love. Yeah. I'm a Pisces. I'm sensitive to like I'm sensitive to like people's emotions yeah. and like like if I feel like you may even consider yeah. that you're not as valuable. I will course correct. Yeah. I'm quick to apologize. You are, I'm right. like very vocal about feelings. Yeah. So it's not hard for me to make sure that you feel loved, respected. Right. In this season, was I always like this? No. It's one of the things that I learned in my marriage, though, mm. because I was raised by strong, independent women. Mm -hmm. And so even coming into my marriage, those first several years, I was still a strong, independent woman in a marriage. Mm. I didn't know how to ask for help. Mm. I didn't know how to be supported. I didn't know how to say I'm overwhelmed. I just kept sucking it up and pushing through. And he would give me more and more because it looked like I was handling it well. Yeah. But really inside, I was like, well, damn it, can I just get some help? Yeah. But I didn't know how to articulate that, right? Uh -huh. So I wasn't always this way, but I definitely, as I've gotten to know myself more, like I've I've accepted that this is okay. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to show love and affection. It's okay to be nourishing and nurturing. You don't always have to be a fixer. Yes. Which is a very masculine energy. Let me ask you this question, because we got like five more minutes on this show. We need like two hours. That flew by. I know. We need like two we need like two hours with, with, with me and Patrice. <laughs> um and we may go over a little bit, so y'all hang up with us. Um this independent woman stuff. Mm -hmm. You're not an independent woman now, at least from what I know of you, right? But you say you were at one point, one point in time. Do you agree with these ladies that they don't need a man? Do you agree, like, when you hear ladies say, I don't need no man. I can do it all by myself. Do you, do you believe that is the right energy? You're successful. Mm -hmm. You know, we was talking about your purse when you came down. I said, well, my God. Okay. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you have the level of success that you technically from a money perspective, you don't need a man. Correct. 
But do you believe in that energy no. when you're talking to a man? No. I need a man. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Is the camera on her? It is on her, right? Yeah. I just want to make sure the camera. No, not on me, bro. On her. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I need you to say that one more time for the camera uh, and be very clear with yeah. your words here. Uh, yeah. Uh, because... Ladies are coming to the table. Some of them saying, I got my education. I got my degree. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like I don't need no man for nothing, so you better come correct. Like, why do you say you do not, like, you do need a man? I need a man. I'm intentionally creating margin in my life, in my calendar, in my schedule to create space for a relationship. <sighs> that is important to me. Talk to us. Because I desire love. Come. I'm lovable. Yes. I'm loving. Yes. I'm a phenomenal lover. To a 6'2", man, I get you. It's if you 6'2 <laughs> and above, right? And I, I need a man. I desire a man. I want a man. I'm not walking around with the energy of I don't need a man. Now, if it were just based on material possessions or on finances and stuff on paper, do I require the financial support of a man? Yeah. No, I do not require that. Do I desire to be supported by a man? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I desire to be held down by a man? Absolutely. Yeah. Held and yeah. held down yeah, I got you. by a man? Absolutely. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't think that we were designed to go through life, like, alone. I right. think that we were designed for companionship. Yeah. And I believe that the right man will have a vision so big, like, mm -hmm. God has given him a vision so big that he will be able to leverage who I am already mm -hmm. and who I'm becoming mm -hmm. to take that vision to the next level. Mm -hmm. So yes, I've done a lot of things in my career and I will continue to do, you know, I think infinitely more, right? Mm -hmm. Or exponentially more. However, I also believe that to see the fullness of what God created me to be, I need to be in partnership. Mm -hmm. And the right man will have a vision where we can leverage my wisdom, my talent, my grace, my beauty, my charm, my experience, all of that stuff to elevate that vision to the next level. Yeah. There's a reason that I can see my career, like what I desire for it, but only so far. Yeah. And I've stopped trying to fight God about why don't I want, you know, more and more and more like, right. you know. I, I, I stopped fighting that because I understand that a portion of that is going to become clear when I'm partnered with the right person. And I'm, and I'm okay with that. So I do need a man. To fulfill everything I believe God has created me to do, I need a man. I need the right man. But bring peace. Appearances are not enough. You gotcha. got to bring peace and purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Listen, that's the best thing that I've, I would say that a woman has said on my show about men. Because I think sometimes... Men, we need to hear that. And I think we need to hear that from successful women who technically from on paper financially don't need us, mm -hmm. but still saying, I need you. That makes a man feel like it will make that that man who is coming your way. He will come after you harder simply because of your heart and your posture. And I think certain ladies don't understand your heart and your posture prevents the right men from coming to you, men from coming to you, because we see you all the time, clowning men, I don't need a man for this, I'm gonna build on my own, I'm creating my own legacy. But like, you kind of remind me of my sister Sarah Jakes. Like, she's building, but she loves the heck out of Torrey Roberts. Like, she needs Torrey Roberts. When she gets off of the stage, the first person she's looking for is not her kids, not her assistant, not her team. It's her husband. I and desire she's that. running to him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, it's the heart and the posture of that woman's spirit that will attract the right man. And I just think that if ladies could understand that, that's on the ladies' side, right? But then men, we got to step up. I got to step up. You know what I'm saying? There's some things inside of me that I'm working on with my therapist, with my life coach, and with my emotional coach. So that way, because you're saying you're preparing yourself, there's some things on the inside of me that I'm preparing and getting rid of so that way I can find the love of my life. Mm -hmm. My love of my life going to be by like five, five, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? By five, six. Everyone asks me, could you date someone taller? I'm like, I could. <laughs> oh, the flip side. I could. Uh-huh. I could. Could you? But uh, <laughs> here we go. You know, if God said it, I could do it. I mean, if God said it, like if he, if she came and she had everything, and she was about two inches taller, I'm like, oh, 
two inches taller flat foot. So when y'all go out, she put her heels on. She's five inches taller. No, honestly, I've, I've done that several times, actually. Mm. Yeah, because I'm only five, what, five, eight, maybe? Hold on, how tall do you think I am? About five, eight? Because when you're flat, are you flat foot now? No. No. So you were like about, yeah, you was up there. My sister, <laughs> my sister was up there. You know, she's always been up there. But I'm like, I've never dated someone your height, but I have dated someone, my ex fiance, when she put on heels. So we were the same height, flat. Mm -hmm. When she put on heels, she was up there. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of like it though, because I can see the. Never mind. <laughs> Let me stop playing with y'all. Oh my goodness, boy! Hey, look at here. He, you need to walk in front of me, girl. Make sure you're all right. Make sure, buddy. <laughs> my God, look at the Lord. <laughs> Yo, uh, Patrice, man, you have so much going on in this new season of your life. You know, what are you working on? What are you building that's helping people with the redefining wealth? I know you have a heart for ladies. I do. Uh, so, what are you building right now in this new season of your life? Because it has to be dope. Because you got all yeah. this free time now. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say that. I'm still raising a 15 year old who's very active. Yeah, but your daughter's real cool, so she ain't that. She ain't super she's, cool. Yeah, she's not like a husband. You know what I'm saying? Eh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, Little sis, I ain't say that. You know what no. I'm saying, niece? I ain't say that's your mom, not me. <laughs> uh, but no. Anyway. No, I'm doing a lot more personal development and spiritual growth work. Okay. Um, because. In everything that I've taught over the years, that's mm -hmm. really the piece that my clients take away most, even wow. though I'm teaching business or podcasting or this or that. Yeah. It's really the confidence and conviction to do what God told you to do the first time. Come on now. Like to own your feelings, to own your experience, and to go from self-awareness to soul awareness. Mm. So I do that through two programs now, Mastery Momentum, which is a six-month mastermind, okay. where we focus on the pillars and okay. we take people from autopilot to authenticity. Wow. A lot of stuff you've just been doing because you've always done it yeah but it doesn't serve you in this season so what gave you life in one season could be killing you in this season so good when god is trying to birth something new okay. and then pillar mastery which is a micro mind so it's a six week intensive deep dive okay. um where we get real and raw and i have seen miracles and breakthroughs happen in a six week period and that's what i take people through their co-created conversations mm. we use the pillars as a framework but i'm not forcing curriculum it's like spirit led mm. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. And can we sign up for that anytime? Or is it is yeah. it is it open closed card? So we're we're uh open right now okay. at the okay. time that this drops, but uh I think my next pillar mastery starts in a few weeks. Okay. That's okay. the six week. Okay. And then the mastermind as well. I'm always enrolling like every other month. Bet. We're gonna drop all of her information in today's show notes, you guys. Everything Patrice does, y'all, I always support her. Um, I think she is just one of the coolest ladies in my life. Um, and I genuinely can't wait. Her next wedding, um, I'm gonna be on the front row, like, yo, bro, that's what I'm talking about, my guy. Um, because she's become a, such a good friend, such a good sister. And so uh, any brothers, if you make over uh, six figures, um, if you are 6'2", if you're generous, kind, and you got to be good looking and you got to be in shape because I've seen I've seen the last ones. And, bro, they good God. You know what I'm saying? They walk up to me. I'm like, God, don't, bro, back up. <laughs> uh, you know, hey, her DMs are open. You got to be right. Don't even slide in there if you if you five five. Don't even slide in there if you five nine. It ain't going to work, bro. It just ain't going to work. I'm sorry. And if you don't love the Lord and if you don't have a heart for people and if you don't know where you're going, just stay away. Honestly, I think all men, if you don't know where you're going, that's you probably one. shouldn't be dating, period. And I think that's one thing about me is I know exactly where I'm going. You know what I find out, too? Some ladies are intimidated by that. Mm -hmm. Some ladies call that arrogant, controlling, because I'm like, yo, this is where I'm going. You can get on or you can stay off. And I'm like, well, how is that controlling? If, if, if I have a clear vision, I'm telling you, it, do you have a vision? And can your vision work with my vision, with my mine. vision, work with your vision, and we build something together? That, But one of the guys I broke up with, he couldn't articulate his vision. What? I say, nah. See, nah, I, I, I know where I'm going. And I told one woman, me, we even talk about this. I've had, I've done a whole show on it. I told her, listen, I'm coming for you. Tell them other Negroes mm -hmm. uh, that they can go ahead and step to the side. And um, I'm looking for marriage. She said that that was a narcissist under control. She said that you were a narcissist? Mm -hmm. Wow. Because I simply said, this is what I'm doing. 
I'm coming for you. To this day, we do not talk. Now, she reached out Ashley recently and was like, hey, I'm sorry, da da da. But, you know. I would too, because you've been out here with your chains and your watch on. Hey, man, and you got your, your Louis on. And you know what? I, know I wasn't. She did reach out. I wasn't. Yeah, I'm serious. Like, you know what? And I have a whole bunch of stuff, and I wasn't going to wear this because, you know, I come from this whole era of, like, not come from. I'm teaching people how to be a good steward of their resources. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of, like, nervous to. To show that for the last 10 years, I've been a good uh, good steward. Now I'm really starting to enjoy and buy the things that I desire. Building my dream home. Yes. Uh, building an amazing team. And Pastor Tim Timberlake, I don't know if you know him. Uh, he's the uh, senior pastor of Celebration Church, one of the largest churches in America. He told me on our show here recently, um, he said, um, Anthony, you need to do what you're doing and show the people that you can have this lifestyle being mm-hmm. debt free. Mm-hmm. And he was like, because if you don't, what people going to do, they're going to talk about you saying, well, the reason why, because look at Anthony, he broke, da 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 So they're going to talk about you no matter what. Yeah. He was like, so let them talk about you, mm-hmm. but encourage that person who is following you to be like, you know what? Dang, Anthony, he got a Louis thing on? Yeah. He paid cash? Aspirational reality. People yeah. need to see what living by the principles do. They need to understand what living by the pillars actually does. Ooh. If I hide everything from you, which I did for a season because I was taught, yeah. we don't, exactly. you know, like you don't. So I would show bits and pieces and be scared and I don't want them to think because this is not about money. It's not about money, but this is what is possible Come on. because I do chase purpose, not money. Come on. I do like pursue purpose relentlessly. So, so it's the byproduct, and you need to see an example of someone who lives that way authentically. Mm, mm, mm. They going to see it. Yeah, you inspire me. No, you inspire me. You do. I'm, I can say this, y'all. Then we're going to go. She inspired me four years ago. She knows she does this, but she knows she, knows she did this. Uh, she inspired me four years ago. She said, bro, I don't have your following, but I made three times your income. And when I transitioned into my new season... Uh, I called Patrice day two. She don't even know this. I was depressed that day. I was scared. I was nervous. And I said, Patrice, I'm stepping out of my own. And I won't say too much, but she literally was like, bro, you're going to be good. And she was like, and let me say this. You don't need millions of people. You don't need thousands of people. You need you need some people, but you're going to make way more money. Just stay true to yourself. Mm-hmm. And yo, she was 100% correct. What she is teaching, ladies, works. Um, and I've watched her from five years ago just, I mean, just do a lot of great things from best selling books to on a national TV show. Um, and she inspired me because I was like, dang, I'll never forget. One day, I never told you this, Patrice, but one day I said in my office, I was like, yo, Patrice was right. When I got my first big check, my first six figure check, and like in one time, mm-hmm. I said, Patrice was right. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this woman was right. Like, what in the world? And ever since then, I've never really tried to build this huge, I'm like, okay, how can I serve the people mm-hmm. that I currently have following me and trusting me right now? And because of that, we've been able to build a seven figure brand. So, love you, sir. Very quickly. You know, I love you. You know, I love you too. And we're trying to get eight figures within the next two years. Because I want my team, I want I want people on my team making six figures, seven figures working with me. Mm-hmm. And that is something that, that, that's my goal. It's like, okay, cool. I'm blessed to make this kind of money. But, hey, how can I position the people who helped me start from the beginning, like CJ? Yeah. Now, he's already at six figures, but how do we get him to make, in, you know, seven figures? Yeah. And then, you know, I got That's Alex a desire of my heart, too. For real? Mm-hmm. I've told my team members that. Come on. Yeah. You didn't, we didn't even talk about that. Mm-mm. That's why she my sister. <laughs> and she can't marry just anybody. I can't. No, I don't care. I need, I need to start looking at all the DMs first. <laughs> Yo, you guys, we love you. We're going to drop Patrice's information in today's show notes. Make sure y'all go subscribe to um, her YouTube channel, her podcast, Amazing. I mean, it is it is amazing. I know some of you all already know her, uh, but if you don't know her, follow her, rock with her, and we'll see you on the next show. Peace out, y'all.